Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're going to talk about how to create transport of copies or TOC in SAP. I did upload a video on transports in SAP and I mentioned that I was going to create a separate video on other actions. So creating transport of copies is one of them. Now I have an image here. This is a train, but we will discuss the analogy later on. Just so we're aligned, I will quickly go through the overview. I am using my blog post for this tutorial. I will leave the link down in the description box below so you can always refer to that for guidance. First off, we will be discussing the purpose of transport of copies and then we're going to move on to the actual creation of TOCs. Towards the end, I will be including a summary just so we go through everything that we have learned in this video. I apologize if you hear some background noises. It's raining at the moment, so please bear with me. First off, we're going to talk about the purpose of transport of copies in SAP. And the first thing that you know comes into mind as a functional consultant or even if you're a developer, Naturally, you need to be able to create your configurations, your code changes, and of course, save it in an SAP transport. This is something that you are already aware about. All of those changes are stored or saved in a transport, and it is through the transport that you can carry over your changes and move them to different SAP environments. Usually, there is a development system a test system or quality system, a release system or a staging system, and a production or live system. Let's say that our development system is called SRD, our test system is called SRQ, our release system is called SRR, and our production environment is called SRP. Now with these SAP environments introduced to you guys, I want you to know that the usual path would be SRD, SRQ, SRR, and then SRP. So this is our transport path. The origin of the change would always come from the development system as per best practices, and it moves in a linear manner all the way up to production system. I will discuss the analogy as to why I chose the train picture. I did emphasize in the blog post that the transport track is like a train and the train basically follows the route provided. So we mentioned these SAP environments, SRD up until SRP. So these are the SAP environments and they're like the train stations. So you can think of your change, let's say your configuration as the person that's going into the train, goes to train station SRD, then moves to train station SRQ, so on and so forth. And definitely since you're dealing with a change that needs to be tested, that needs to be validated by the business, that change has to undergo some sort of validation or approval before it can reach its final destination, which is production or SRP. The sequence is the main point of why transport of copies are being done or created. In a normal transport, let's say you save it in a transport and you decide to release it, the normal behavior would be as follows. So once you release your transport in SRD or the development system, you will find that transport automatically available in the rest of the SAP environment. So we have SRQ, SRR, SRP. Those environments will have your transport when it is released. Since it's something that will be automatically available in the other environments, especially in production, there are cases when you don't want this to happen. So I did include some sort of statement here saying I don't want this to happen. What if there are changes that need to be done after testing? So the concept here is that you don't necessarily want your transport to be available in all the other environments you want to be able to test it first um, get the user sign off so on and so forth before you actually release it now because of this scenario you're trying to be a bit cautious or careful when you move the transport the user tests it or you test it 
there could be errors encountered, bugs, or you could even see that you missed a configuration, a certain code needs to be revised, or you need to include more objects, so on and so forth. That would mean that you need to tinker around with your transport again. So because of that concern, definitely you don't want the unfinalized, unapproved, or unintended transports to be found in the other SAP environments or train stations. It can get quite messy or complicated. This is where the functionality of TOC comes in handy. Basic functionality of this is that you can move the TOC to a certain SAP environment of your choice, for example, where you intend to test. So in this example, we're going to try to create a TOC and move it to our quality system for testing. At this point, you should be able to know that the, the transport of copies will not be automatically transferred across your SAP system landscape following the transport track we discussed a while ago. So in a way, it is a lot cleaner and you can ensure that it's not imported into the production system as well. Overall, the TOC serves as a suitable option for testing purposes in a specific or certain SAP environment. I did include an SAP help document here in case you're interested. So with that basic functionality of TOC in mind, we can try to create a transport of copy in SAP. Basically, do whatever change you want as an exercise and save your changes. Make sure it's in a transport, name that transport, and remember that we're calling this our main transport. The idea here is that from your main transport, we're going to create a copy of that, or at least the objects of your main transport, to another transport, which is going to be called our TOC and we're going to release that TOC and move it to the intended SAP environment. So at this point, the main transport remains unreleased. Nothing is done to it. It's still there and only the TOC is moved. So the steps below basically talk about how to create that TOC. The first thing that you want to do is, of course, do your configurations and save it in a transport. You want to take note of that transport number. And if you go to transaction code SE10 and locate your transport, it will look something like this. Let's say that the blue box over here indicates your main transport. And if you expand it further, you'll see another number within that main transport. So this is the one enclosed in the green box. And at this point, I want you guys to remember that when we're talking about SRD 334, 876, basically whatever is in, whatever transport number is within this main transport will be called your child transport number. And the idea or the analogy is basically this is your parent and this is the child. So more or less, when you expand this further, you see that the child contains the SAP objects of your change. Next up would be to go to SE10. If you haven't done that yet, go to SE10 and locate for your main transport. Press enter to proceed and then click on the create request button. So once you're here in this window, you'll see a paper icon over here. And once you click that, simply select transport of copies. Once you're done selecting that, click on the check button to proceed. And you should see some sort of window like this. So what you want to do is enter a short description of your TOC. And what I like to do is copy the exact same description that I used for the main transport and add the acronym TOC before the main description. This is my personal preference. I like to make sure that I include TOC in the description because it helps me easily distinguish what is the TOC from the main transport. And I know you can quickly identify it with the number, but you know, sometimes seeing the description just makes it a lot easier. 
Now for some of you who are wondering what is this 11103032 before back determination, this is just an example. It's a random number that I came up with. But ideally, this is a this is normally exchange request number, uh, a project number, a project name, anything that is related to your change. And at the end of the day, the naming convention depends on your organization, company, or the client preferences. So you need to be able to align with the needed naming convention. Enter the short description. The owner would be your SAP ID and you need to indicate the target system. So in this case, we want to move this transport or this TOC to SRQ.200. Once you're done with those details, simply, simply click on the save button and now you're going to locate that saved TOC. So in this screenshot, we generated transport number SRD. 334877. This is going to be our TOC. Simply click on that and then follow the path request slash task, object list, and then select include object. So at this point, the idea here is to include the objects from your main transport and copy it to your TOC. So we're creating an exact copy of your main transport. Once you click on the include object selection, you should see this window called include objects and request. You'll see the TOC transport number and you'll see a bunch of these selections. In this example, we're going to select object list from request. This is where you specify the child transport number. Recall that the screen box is what we were referring to a while ago. We're taking the child and not the parent. So simply enter the child transport number over here. And once you're done with that, simply click on the check button and you'll see a notification. Object entries from transport were passed to object list transport where the orange is your TOC and the green is of course your child transport number. Some of you may be confused why am I using the child transport and not the parent transport? To give you a really simple explanation, at least in my perspective. Basically, what you need to understand is the objects that you need are contained in the child transport. So if we go back to the screenshot, you'll see that the screen box, your child transport, contains your changes, your transport objects. So this is the importance of specifying this now you can of course uh, play around with this see how it works if you select the parent transport instead of the child transport number you can experiment with that if you have some sort of sandbox or environment you can uh, experiment on but ideally this is the concept at the end of the day if it helps you visualize a lot further then that would be a lot helpful for you. Now that we have included the objects from the main transport to our TOC, it is now time to release transport of copies. In the same transaction code SC10, simply locate your TOC and press F9 or click on the truck button to release your TOC. Once the TOC is released, you should be able to see it in the target SAP environment, target destination. You know that the change is going to be in the target SAP environment. You can of course double check if the TOC is visible. Once you import it or someone else imports it for you, the changes are going to be applied in that specific SAP environment and you can proceed with your testing. And the normal procedure applies. So for example, if testing goes well, and no additional changes are needed, you can release your main transport when ready for movement to production. So let's say you secured the UAT or the business approval, your testing went well, you can go back to SE10 and release the actual main transport. If test results require additional changes, for example, you missed a configuration, you need to 
change the code, you forgot a certain object in the transport, you still have the main transport and you can do your rework there. So you need to make sure that all of the changes that you do, all of the additions that you do, you need to include that in the same main transport. Remember that it hasn't been released, so you can still include, edit, change the main transport as needed. And then once that is okay, you can repeat the same TUC procedure. This will create a new TUC number. Simply copy the objects again from the main transport to your new TUC and bring the updated changes in the target SAP environment for retesting. That's basically it. TOC concept is pretty helpful, especially if you're dealing with a lot of SAP environments. So let's say that a certain environment is a copy of production, but it is to be used for a different project, or it is to be used for another purpose, so on and so forth. So again, we're trying to establish this sort of cleanliness. We don't want to release, 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 and then it gets moved to all of the SAP environments. Now we're at the summary portion. So the first thing you want to do is perform your configurations, code changes, and save it in a transport. That's going to be your main transport. Take note of the child transport number because you're going to be using this later on. Then you create your TOC, enter the short description for that TOC, and then click on request task, object list, include objects, Select the include object list from request video button. This is where you basically copy the objects from the main transport to the TOC. And then if all is well, you can release the TOC and proceed with your testing. That's basically it for this video. I hope it helps. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.